Welcome back to the channel and thank you for being here. Just to say, this video is proudly sponsored by FS Academy and they've got a new bundle called Zero to Hero which offer five training packs in one package. That is IFR, VFR, Jetliner, Navigator and Commander. Priced at $69.99, this represents roughly around 40% discount from the full lineup with a total of 60 training missions produced by a real world airline captain. All the links for FS Academy will be in the description below. Anyway, it's now time to get into today's video. Hello folks, I hope you're all doing very well. In this video today, I'm going to give you my personal recommendations for VR settings for MSFS using the crystal light. It's going to be a no thrills, no bullshit video, and I'm going to show you some of the settings I run with various GPUs now that I've tried it. Because I've tried the crystal light now with a 3070 Ti, a 4070 Ti, and obviously my system, which is a 4090. So a big thank you to some of my friends who have allowed me to come over with my crystal light and spend an afternoon tweaking and messing around since I don't have access to loads of different computers, unfortunately. My channel is nowhere near big enough for that kind of thing. So anyway, these settings are sort of guidelines, you know, you could try them as a baseline and work from there. It's pretty simple stuff, really. What I do is not very difficult and let's get straight into this. So first of all, what do you need? Well, I'd recommend, highly recommend that you download the Pimax XR switcher, which is absolutely essential and thank you to Matt for all you have done for the VR community and I know you're watching this and again it really means a lot you have transformed VR for so many of us so all the work you've done over the years it really means a lot now if you're just using the crystal light for MSFS then really you don't need to run this program any more than once you can just forget about it because I would highly recommend that you use the Pimax XR runtime it's far better than Steam VR for this headset okay and here I it's up to you guys if you want to use the prefer frame rate over latency option here or in the open XR toolkit I believe that's the same as turbo mode so you can either switch it on here or switch it on in the OpenXR toolkit depending if you're using the OpenXR toolkit because I realize it's not really being supported now but I'm not too concerned about this because at this point MSFS is really matured and I don't think it's gonna break and even if there was some game breaking or sim breaking bug I do believe Matt would fix this for us so I do think the OpenXR toolkit when it comes to MSFS 2020 is pretty solid it's gonna stick around for quite a while yet but if you don't want to use that then you can always use it here but even as a third option you can actually enable that in the sim as well but either way I'd recommend having it on okay because it does make a difference that I've found anyway in terms of the lock half refresh rate we don't need to do that anymore I'll explain why in a minute and in terms of eye tracking well, unfortunately, of course, the Crystal Light does not have eye tracking, so don't really worry about that. The only reason why I've got that switched on is because I also have the standard Crystal. The mirror, by the way, is useful if you want to take uh, VR footage, which, again, I'll show you in a moment uh, for the OpenXR toolkit settings. In terms of my VR settings in the sim, well, let me just show you, first of all, this is what I run with my 4090. And you'll probably notice anyone who watches a lot of my VR settings guides that I run this now as a base sort of line settings for all of my VR headsets, whether it's the Vira XR4 or the Quest 3. I leave these like this. And I will explain some of the real heavy hitters, as I like to call them, the sort of settings that make a big difference to the performance of the VR uh, experience in a moment. This is what I run with a 4070 Ti. Now for 3070 users, even though I'm not a fan of DLSS, I would recommend using it for the crystal light, particularly because that graphics card, in my opinion, is probably the lowest you want to go for a headset such as the crystal because it's that resolution, you know, it's, it's a lot to handle. So these are the settings I run 
with the 3070 that I tested. Yes, they are low. But guys, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Because once you're in the sim, you're not going to notice that. You're just going to enjoy it. And this is something that I want to drive home, and I say this all the time, is just lower those settings down, guys. It's really important. I think pretty much most people out there are running their settings far too high. And you get frustrated because you're not getting the performance that you want. Just turn them down. And then don't worry about them. Just enjoy the sim. The great thing about MSFS is it still looks really great, even low to medium in VR. And I personally feel it looks better at low to medium in VR than it would on a flat screen with ultra settings. Also, it's important to run DirectX 12 with DLSS because it just runs much better. And of course, you've already seen what I've run with a 4090. Now, this is also dependent upon your CPU. So let's just talk about some of those heavy hitters. For instance, um, this one here, terrain level of detail, is a real killer for your CPU. And look how low I've got that, even with a 13900K. I would even recommend going back even further, you know, and having it at 90 to 100. You will notice a big difference in frame rate with that one. Also, with off-screen terrain pre-caching, that is a really important one for VR. However, I feel there's a big difference between ultra and high. So keep it at high, okay? That's what I recommend anyway. Buildings is another one for your CPU. Since I have a 13900K, I do keep that on high, as well as trees and grass and bushes as well. In terms of volumetric clouds, again, there's a big difference between ultra and high and that's a bit of a theme with this sim for some reason there is a big jump in fps between these two so there's not a lot of settings here that i do run on ultra if you do have a 4090 in you know plenty of vram then texture resolution keep that on ultra in terms of af well i run that at 16 times and to be honest most modern graphics cards like a 4070 can easily run at 16 times. Some people out there prefer to switch this off in the sim and then use uh, 16 times in your Nvidia settings. You could try that. I personally haven't seen any difference at all with that. So I run that at 16 times. So as we scroll down a bit further, and sorry if my voice sounds croaky today, I was on my stag do last night and I am feeling pretty rough. But I'm trying to get this video out for you guys since I have been asked quite a lot for this particular settings guide. So things like contact shadows and just shadows in general in this sim, well, it's very poorly optimized and that's going to be a big deal for MSFS 2024. They look better and they perform better. But for this sim, it's a big no-no and I would recommend keeping some of this stuff quite low. Another heavy hitter is ambient occlusion. It's a beautiful setting. It really is but it does hurt badly. And that's why even with a 4090, I have that on medium. Now in terms of light shafts, I have that off simply because of the eye tracking that I use with other headsets. It does interfere, but if you have got some extra frames that you can spare, then I would recommend running that on medium because it does look really nice. Bloom, I personally like that, but it is a bit of a um, frame rate hog, but I do like the look of it. And glass cockpit refresh rate. For me personally, cockpit refresh rate is really important when looking at your gauges. Right, so that's all saved there. Now in terms of AA, I prefer TAA. I am a TAA guy through and through. I don't like DLSS very rare that I use it. Now, some people, again, will disagree with me on that, and that's absolutely fine, guys. It really is. This isn't a, uh, a scientific, you know, video. This is just how I prefer to run the sim. But if you do use DLSS, then instead of using DirectX 11, which is definitely the best for TAA, run DirectX 12. Restart the sim and then you will have better performance with DLSS. And also, regarding that, I would use the OpenXR toolkit. So here, if you're gonna use DLSS, then make sure to try upscaling and sharpening. I use 
I know it's quite high, but it does make a difference, with either NIS, FSR or CAS. Have a play around, guys, and uh, see which one you prefer. Don't use that with TAA mode, because it will look really grainy, but with DLSS, I do find that works really well. There are other methods of doing it, and, you know, if you want to sort of join my Discord channel, um, there are people out there that like swapping the DLSS file and all that kind of thing. I haven't bothered with that. Don't find it's necessary. Right, now let's go back to TAA, which I really do recommend, guys, personally. Um, because I would prefer to downscale the resolution in TAA mode rather than upscaling the resolution and using DLSS. That's just how I like to run it. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. If you do have the OpenXR toolkit, then you can use the override resolution setting. And I find 3500 by 4142 to be a really nice sweet spot for 4070 Ti up to 4090. And you will get a nice solid 45 frames per second most places with that. And the drop off in clarity isn't that huge. You don't even have to use the OpenXR toolkit, however. You can use the Pimax Play software, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now, of course, we don't have eye tracking with the crystal light, but you can still use fixed favorite rendering. And again, this is what I use. Have a play around with it. Um, but fixed favorite rendering on preset or custom. And if you use custom, you've got all this stuff to play with. But honestly, I find quality with a pattern set of balanced really, really good. So let's just look at the Pimax Play software. In device settings, you have a wealth of options here for refresh rates, which is a great feature of the Crystal Light, it must be said. I think for most cases, I'd recommend 90 hertz. But hopefully, in the future, you will get a 60 hertz mode for the Crystal Light. But for me personally, I find anything lower than about 75 hertz is a bit stroby. But if you can manage it, the lower the refresh rate, the, the uh, better chance your computer will hit the target frame rate. So in the games tab here, absolutely recommend switching this little bad boy on because this is so important and it really should say lock to half refresh rate, not frame rate. That's kind of wrong there, Pimax. You need to change that. But uh, basically, in a nutshell, if you're running at 90 hertz, then try and basically set your system so that it can run 45 frames per second at most places. And I always say the best way to do that is to find one of your high fidelity aircraft and go to London City with bad weather and try and hit the best you can at 45 frames per second. And if you can do that there, you are good to go anywhere, pretty much, in the MSFS world. Try also New York. That's also a pretty, you know, difficult area to uh, render for your computer. So, for example, you could run the Pimax Crystal at 120 hertz. And that way, if you hit 60 frames per second, or actually even feasibly 30 frames per second, that will run okay. Because it's basically a quarter of that refresh rate. So 30, 60, 90, and 120. Same here for 90 hertz. If you're running at 22.5 or 45 frames per second or 90 hertz. And it's the same for 72 hertz and 60 hertz. Everything will just go by a lot smoother and it will be a lot better. At the moment, unfortunately, smart smoothing isn't really working that well with the crystal light. So that's a work in progress. So for the time being, switch that off. So if you don't want to use the OpenXR toolkit, okay, to override the settings, which I did somewhere here, there. If you don't want to do all that, you can change it in the Pimax Play software as well. And that is here, render quality. So I have mine at maximum because I've got a 4090 obviously, but if you click custom and say if you've got a 4070 Ti or lower, then just have a play around with this guys. I can't tell you exactly what setting to run here. It's just a case of what I said before, go to London City and try some of these settings out. It's a balance between clarity 
and performance. But I would recommend 0.75 as a baseline there for a 4070 Ti. Maybe even a 3070, 3080. Try this and sort of have a play around and see what works for you. In terms of fixed foveated rendering, well, I believe that only works in Steam VR mode, so don't worry about that. Again, that's where you can use the OpenXR toolkit to use the fixed foveated rendering settings there. The last thing I'm going to mention is hags and game mode. So if you type in GPU in the search bar there, graphic settings, go to change default graphic settings. I personally prefer hardware accelerated GPU scheduling to on. That works much better for me. And also for game mode, can you get it from here? I think you can. Yes, you can. Game mode settings. I also have that on because I find, and this is just a contentious one, that for my system, game mode on and with GPU scheduling turned on, that makes a big difference for me personally. But again, your results may vary. Now, here's another one that I don't mention very often, and that is I would not recommend using AI offline because that hurts performance. I always use real-time online traffic and I actually use just flight FS traffic as well, which works pretty decently because you still get all those liveries such as the Ryanairs and EasyJets flying about. And in terms of airport life, again, mess around with this yourself. As you can see, this is very low for me. I do like to see though lots of boats and road vehicles. This is quite CPU intensive. So have a play around with it, but that's what I use for my system. Now there's other programs out there as well, such as Auto FPS and Smooth Flight. I have videos of both of them on the channel. I actually really do like Smooth Flight if you can still find it, because I'm sure it's still being uh, developed. And I will link it in the description below. And as you can see from this footage here, it basically dynamically changes the level of detail, which I mentioned before is one of the major heavy hitters. And it does make a really big difference. And you can change those settings to your heart's content. Things like when you're coming into land, the uh, T-LOD, terrain level of detail, can be brought right back, which will then really improve your performance. And then once you're up into the flight levels, the train level detail can then be widened out. Very cool feature and it's something I wish a Sobo could implement into the PC version of this sim. So there we are folks, that's my recommended VR settings. Keep in mind this is just a guide and every system is going to be different. There are thousands of different setups out there so as I say use this as a bit of a baseline. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. And I'm now going to have another coffee because I'm still hungover. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.